as a result of the refusal of those who requested for the recall to show up, we are compelled to once again adjourn the sitting of the House. Knowing the challenges we are facing, it is not advisable to be adjourning from day to day. And so I'll proceed once more to adjourn the meeting indefinitely. And the meeting, this extraordinary meeting, is accordingly adjourned. That was the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Babin, adjourned and sitting indefinitely for the second time in a few weeks. The House had been recalled after it was earlier adjourned indefinitely for the lack of quorum to take decisions. For today's sitting, the Speaker explained that he was adjourning indefinitely because there was no business paper presented by the business committee. The signatories who made the request have not shown up, and therefore matters that they wanted us to handle, which are admitted for the consideration of the business committee, are not on the other paper, and in fact there's no other paper for today because the business committee could not meet due to the absence of the people who requested for the recall. And as you can see, one side of the house is completely empty. In view of this, we have, as usual, got a quorum to sit, but we have no business before us to transact because the business committee, as you know, they prepare a report and this report is adopted by the House as business agreed by the House to transact during the course of the week. In the absence of that, there's no other authority that can put business before you which you have not adopted to transact. In view of the failure of the business committee to sit as a result of the refusal of those who requested for the recall to show up, we are compelled to once again adjourn the sitting of the House. And so I'll proceed once more to adjourn the meeting indefinitely. And the meeting, this extraordinary meeting, is accordingly adjourned. And the House found itself again in this position because the NDC and MPP caucuses are still disputing certain arrangements in terms of who is majority and had the right to sit on the right side of the Speaker in line with the convention in the House. When the House resumed today, members from the NDC occupied the right side of the Speaker and so the MPP members stayed outside. Please. It's not part of the duties of a speaker to decide where an MP should sit in parliament. It's not my duty. That determination in Ghana's situation, in various parliaments, these things we are talking about, majority side, minority side, don't exist any longer. The speaker is not involved in this. After they have agreed on it, they then get in touch with the parliamentary service through the clerk who will get his officer at the table together with the marshal and they will get the names, print them and place them on the various tables as decided by the various caucuses. The speaker don't come in this. 
How can you call speaker to come and decide where people should sit? It's not part of my duties. The MPP caucus addressed the press afterwards and blamed the speaker for creating confusion in the House. Alexander Fenyomark, leader of the MPP caucus, had this to say. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker himself, in his press conference in the afternoon, enumerated a number of things. Among them, he said he had not made a ruling. He told the whole of the country that he had not made a ruling. So, if he claims that what he did was a formal communication in response to a statement from the minority leader, then why is he supervising chaos in the House? What Mr. Speaker did today amount to supervising chaos and bringing the image of democracy to disrepute. The NDC minority members were all over claiming that we, the majority, did not attend a so-called business committee meeting that they called. Who are they? When, when, did we, when did we constitute a new committee in parliament? I chair the business committee of parliament. And when the clerk to parliament asked for the business committee meeting, I was very explicit that the subject matter of the recall, which was approved by Mr. Speaker, is a very matter for consideration. So there's no need to have another business committee. Business committee is to decide on the business of the house. On this occasion, you have made an application, which application has been granted. And the items that were approved were the very things to be decided on. So I directed that the business, the other paper should be printed to reflect all those items. Fortunately, Mr. Speaker himself read the two letters. The first one and the second one that amended the first and indicated to the whole country that indeed our deputy majority whip, the second deputy majority whip, had actually sent those letters to him. He acknowledged him as such. Clearly, the NDC is on a war path. They want confusion in this country. They want lawlessness in this country. And all these are being supervised by Mr. Speaker. You see, Speaker, Speaker is setting the country on fire. Yesterday, we, we were disappointed with his non-reconciliatory posture during this press conference. Indeed, we, the majority caucus, call on Mr. Speaker one more time to demonstrate statesmanship. We want Mr. Speaker to know that although we were not happy on the day he was elected, some of our colleagues perhaps has seen something good in him. It wasn't the NDC that put him there for him to do the bidding of the NDC. Perhaps people felt that he could be someone who would bring all of us together. There are things that we cannot say into the camera. But Mr. Speaker is hurting democracy. What Mr. Speaker is doing is to rehearse what the NDC is likely to do should they lose power, to bring chaos, to cause confusion. And in sports, Black Stars coach Otto Addo has addressed the decision to leave Thomas Pate out of Ghana's 25-man squad for the upcoming AFCON qualifiers against Angola and Niger, citing private discussions aimed to protecting the player. I had a confidential talk with Thomas. I am the coach who always wants to protect the players, Addo told reporters. He added, I am not going to tell you the internal issue, but I made it quite clear to him. He wanted to come, but I made it quite clear why he's not coming. This comment suggests the decision was not based on Pate's fitness, but rather on a shared understanding to preserve the player's best interest. Ado further explained that the detail of their discussion would remain private, noting, it is difficult for me to mention all the things, so maybe we have to move on. Pate's absence from the crucial qualifiers has led to the reshuffle in the Black Stars' leadership, with Jordan Ayew assuming the captaincy.
Initially, Otto Ado had intended to appoint Pate as the captain for these matches to guide the team. The initiative was to make Thomas the captain to guide the team. Ado has looked to younger players like Mohamed Kudus to take on larger leadership role, though he emphasized Kudus would need time to go into the responsibility. The 25-man squad for the qualifiers announced on Thursday includes several players from Europe's top league with standout names like Premier League star Kudus, Ayu, Antoine Semenyo, and Fatal Isahaku, who are all expected to play pivotal roles. Defender Alexander Jeku and Kudus will support Ayu in the leadership group. Monaco defender Mohamed Salisu will miss the qualifiers due to a hamstring injury sustained in the 2-0 loss to Sudan last month. However, Lorenz Nathaniel Ajay returns to the squad, having recovered from an earlier injury that kept him out of previous matches. Ibrahim Osman and Joseph Pintel also made their return after both missed the Sudan double header in October due to injuries. The squad sees representation from the Ghana Premier League as well, with Nations FC Razak Simpson. Summertex defender Isaac Afo and Asante Kotoko's Emmanuel Entry earning call-ups. Ghana faces a high-stakes situation in these final AFCON qualifiers, first against Angola on November 15, 2024, away in Luanda before ending their campaign at home against Niger on November 18, 2024, at the Accra Stadium. The team must win both fixtures and hope for Sudan to falter in order to secure a spot in the tournament in Morocco. With Pate and Salisu out, these matches will be a test of depth and resilience for Ado's side as they fight to keep their AFCON hopes alive. Thank you for watching. For more news, please visit our website graphic.com.gh and follow us on social media. Our handles are Daily Graphic Ghana on Facebook and Instagram, Graphic Online Ghana on TikTok and Graphic GH on YouTube and X. My name is Arabna Kobra.